Hey, hey guys. Hello, hello. Happy Monday. Yes, I am on early, guys. It is the e it is Christmas Eve Eve. And my vacation starts soon, but I wanted to do this episode, our last episode, last official episode of 2019. Um, give me a sec. While I'm out here. All right, I'm going to share this out to my groups. Teach me. I was just listening to my Miguel station. Teach me how to love. Show me the way to surrender my heart. Y'all didn't know I could sing, did you? <laughs> if you didn't know, I was in a choir from like eight years of age all the way up through college. I love singing when I was younger. I actually wanted to be a singer. Um, obviously, I took a different route. Hi. Hello. I see you on Facebook. Say hi so I can properly greet you. Happy Monday. Give me one second. Um, let me go live on Instagram. How are you? Teach me how to love. I was listening, ooh, I love that song. Like, I will say this about Music Soul Child. While I don't think he had a lot of growth as an artist, the songs that he did come out with, I really felt, I really did. Um, no good deed goes unpunished. Okay. Pin comment. All right. Yes, we are live everywhere, everywhere. Okay. Yay. Hey, everybody. Happy Christmas Eve, Eve. Um, happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Festivus, whatever you celebrate during this season. Um, a good time to you. I hope you have a wonderful time with your family and friends. Hello to the two people on Facebook. I see y'all watching. Hello, hello to Anshula. Hi, girl. I love your bag so much. And I have seen your um, post for the perfume. I got to order me some. Guys, if you're looking for authentic um, Nigerian craftsmanship for your bags and somebody who can sew their butts off and is coming out with a fragrance, go check out Helade and Shola Atelier. Also, Helade and Shola bags, I believe. Um, Helade and Shola everywhere. Uh, they're amazing. Hi, Kel30 Wilson. How you doing? Um, yes. So we are going to get started very shortly. This is uh, the, um, like I said, I was going to be on on Monday. Um, can't wait till 8 o'clock because I just have some things to do before my flight tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I wanted to get on here and have our last official show of 2019. That doesn't mean that I won't be on before the end of the year, but this is the last, like, you know, definite one, okay? All right, so we're going to get started in about 60 seconds. Um, I want to give a couple more people some time to get in. Okay, um, hope you guys have finished all your Christmas shopping. I have finished all of mine. Thank goodness. Um, just in time. <laughs> all right. Okay, so we're just going to jump in. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot my recorder for the podcast. Y'all were just going to let me go without recording for the podcast. That's how y'all feel for real. Um, yes. Uh, um, so, Ooh, I gotta blow those out. Um, while this turns on, hold on. Actually, no, I'll let that go. Okay. Hi. Hello. Yeah, so we're going to get started very shortly. I am just turning on the recording device so I can record the audio for the show so that it can be in podcast form for those who don't have a chance to watch the video, okay? Um, if you're wondering who I am, I'm Natalie Pierre-Lewis, owner and operator of NPL Consulting LLC. I'm going to go into what that means as soon as this recording device starts up. And by recording device, I mean my old tablet that is good for nothing else. Um... 
Okay. All right. So we are just about ready. Hello, please say hi. Let me know where you're joining from so I can greet you properly. Uh, we're getting started soon. All right. Hey, Tanya, how you doing, girl? My dear, how you doing? All right. So we're, we're literally getting started right now, guys. So get ready. Okay. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Monday. Happy Christmas Eve, Eve. Happy pre whatever you celebrate to everybody. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, I'm great, Tanya. Thank you for asking. Um, I am Natalie Pierre Lewis. I am the host of this show, MPL Legal Dish, which you are watching right now, and owner and operator of MPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help Everyday people, creatives, people who want to be entrepreneurs, I help you guys get your business paperwork set up. If you need help with things like getting registered with the state, EIN numbers, DUNS numbers, contracts, brand protection, hiring employees properly, I help you do all of that stuff. If you're wondering why I'm qualified to help you do all of that stuff, I'm so happy that you asked. Uh, I'm a licensed attorney. I have been one for 13 years and counting. I focus on business formation. I have started multiple businesses for myself and others. I have had many careers in the realms of the law, entrepreneurship, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but so many of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to make it in business, there's just some stuff that you need to know. There's no way around it. And that's why I'm here. Um, if you uh, would like to see how you can work with me while I am not taking clients now, hello, Marilyn Woods, Woods Lee, while I'm not taking clients now, um, for the rest of 2019, I am taking clients starting in 2020. Um, you can book a discovery call going to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. Thank you for the hearts, Tanya. There you're also going to find uh, the link to my YouTube channel where you can watch back episodes of this show and you can find the uh, podcast version. If you can't list, if you can't watch, you can always at least listen to the audio. Um, as well, you'll find uh, my e store where you can find all my digital digital products and my business launch cheat sheet that will help you launch your dream business in seven days or less. So there's a lot happening there. So go to linktree forward slash MPL consulting firm. All right. Now on to the show. Uh, thank you, my dear. The way that this works is, you know, we talk about stories. This isn't me talking at you. This is us having a conversation. I like your input. I like to hear what you have to say about these stories. And we have some juicy ones today. Can't wait to get to them. Um, Yes, yeah, so we um, are not even going to beat around the bush because, you know, it's holiday time. I'm ready to celebrate, and I know you're ready to celebrate too, all right? So let's get right to it. Okay, um, the first story we're going to talk about is actually, uh, I'm going to start with the last story that I plan to talk about. And where is it here? Is it here? Okay, so as you can see, the title of this show is called No Good Deed Goes Unpunished, right? And um, do I have anybody here who has ever been to Long Beach, California? If you have been to Long Beach, California, give me an L. And I'm going to tell you why I'm asking in just a moment, all right? If you've been to Long Beach, California, give me an L, all right? You have not? Okay, that's cool. So here's why I'm asking if you've been to Long Beach, California. So apparently Long Beach is really known for this famous boat called the Queen Mary, right? And the Queen Mary is, um, it, it's in need of a lot of repairs right now, okay? Um, so this community group called QMI, Restore the Queen, they have been trying to raise money to renovate the Queen Mary ship, right? Sounds very benign and benevolent, right? Um, here's the problem. Long Beach, California is threatening to sue this community group because they are using the name and image of this boat, which Long Beach, California has the trademark rights to. Um, they are threatening to sue because the campaign materials for restoring this boat make it seem like the city is involved in this restoration project, which they are not. <coughs> now, the coordinator of this fundraising effort um, was trying to meet with city officials when they got the cease and desist letter saying, can you please stop using the name and the picture of the ship? Um, 
Yeah, and the, the coordinator obviously was disappointed. They're like, um, we try to help y'all. We try to raise some money. You're going to threaten to sue us? So my question to you, ladies and gentlemen, is do you think that this was a smart move by the city of Long Beach, California? No, this was not an authorized group by the city, but they were trying to restore something that Long Beach, California is really known for. So do you think all of this sending cease and desist letters and threatening to sue while they're in their rights to do so because they own the trademark, do you think that that is a good decision, right? Do you think that they're just protecting their interests or do you think they're just like <clears throat> being um being unreasonable? Because for me, if um it's kind of like when I was thinking about it, I was thinking it's kind of like if somebody puts up a GoFundMe for you and they use your picture and they put your name, but you never ask them to put up a GoFundMe for you. Um, so that's kind of what this is like. So what do you guys think about, A, this group just kind of taking it upon themselves to raise this restoration money? And B, what do you think about the city of Long Beach, California, threatening to sue them for doing that? What do y'all think? <clears throat> because for me, if I was the group that had been trying to organize to get, you know, um, this money together for restoration, I would quit. I would be like, y'all are so ungrateful. I'm out here trying to help y'all restore, you know, something that the city is really known for, a staple of Long Beach, California. And you're going to try and sue me? I would just drop it right then and there. So what do you guys think about this group trying to raise money? Do you think they should try and go ahead and work with the city, with the city officials? Or do you think that they should just go on about their business? What do you think? Um, those of you who are listening to the podcast, if you have an opinion on this Queen Mary, um, boat repair case, please feel free to, uh, send your responses to NPL consulting firm at gmail.com. Like I said, if it was me, if I was trying to help somebody and they threatened to sue me, I would be like, okay, you got it. I'm, I'm out, but that's just me. Okay. Um, whew. Uh, yeah, so that was the first uh, story that we were talking about today. Um, next story, I think you guys will have a little bit more in common with. Um, have you, uh, have any of you, anybody in the audience, if you have flown uh, American Airlines, give me an A. And if you have flown Delta Airlines, give me a D. If you've flown both of them, give me an A, D. I've flown both of them. Um, they're both, you know, very popular airlines in the United States. Um, did you know that American Airlines has a trademark on the word flagship? So uh, American Airlines apparently has been, has had the term flagship, tr has been using the term flagship since the 1930s to promote its um, <coughs> never will again. <laughs> Delta is good for losing your luggage, Tanya. I remember I flew Delta one time and they lost my luggage. I was only going from Boston to Maryland and they lost my luggage. I couldn't even believe it. <coughs> but on to bigger and better things. Anyway, but American Airlines, um, since the 1930s, has used the term flagship to describe their premium services. So they've got um, a flagship lounge, flagship suite, and it's basically to describe their high-end um, services. You know, uh, here's the problem. Delta has started using the term flagship. They started using it in 2016, and they're using it to promote airport lounges and their premium service and interiors and american airlines is like whoa there daddy daddy we've got the trademark on flagship we've been using it since the 1930s what are you doing now the word flagship in my opinion prior to this story i never associated it with american airlines to me a flagship always meant like the original um like if you have a chain of um restaurants or stores flagship is like the big mama done dada like if you think about macy's i think like for me when i think macy's and flagship i think the macy's in new york city the one that's like how many floors high right that to me is a flagship or um the very first store of something I, prior to this, did not know that American Airlines had, you know, rights to the term flagship for their services. 
But American Airlines is like, we do, and we're enforcing it. So they are now going after Delta for using the term flagship to promote their own premium services. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about that? Do you think that flagship is a unique enough term um, for American Airlines that they can claim um, ownership of it in terms of describing their high-end services? What do you think about that? Ooh, excuse me. What y'all think about that? Uh, 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 uh. Um, I think that the, 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 the trademarks are registered, so American Airlines does have the right to defend their trademark. The thing is, I had never heard about it before this case. And that's probably because I don't really fly American like that. But um, for those of you who may be American Airlines Advantage customers, if you fly American a lot, you may know about their flagship services. And if you do, get your girl a buddy pass. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay. So we did American Airlines. We did Long Beach, California. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So next story that we are talking about. Has anybody in the audience seen the movie Tron? Hello, Capital Credit Mish. Has anybody in the audience seen the movie Tron? The movie Tron came out... I don't know. It came out some time ago, at least five years ago. Um, it, or the sequel to it. Um, the original one, I want to say, came out in the 80s. Um, and if you didn't know... All of the rights to this movie, it was produced by the Disney Corporation. You know, Disney got that long money. Um, actually, I was looking at the Disney app today, and they have Tron Legacy in, um, you know, it's one of the choices that you can watch on the Disney Plus app, right? Um, how many of y'all got Disney Plus? If you got Disney Plus, give me a, a, a D plus <laughs> in the comments and let me know how you like it. Anyway, so... Um, we know Disney has the trademarks to Tron, okay? Here's the problem. Um, if you if you guys have heard of uh, Crypt... That you got Disney Plus, how you like it, Mish? Um, <coughs> and while she tells us how she likes Disney Plus, let's go into the story. So if you um, don't know what cryptocurrency is, uh, if, if you remember hearing a few years ago, everybody was going crazy over Bitcoin... And cryptocurrency, this is a story having to do with cryptocurrency. So long story short, cryptocurrency is digital money that's not backed by a bank. Um, and people are trying to dive in, create their own digital currency. And there is a company out there that was trying to trademark the word Tron for cryptocurrency. They submitted three trademark applications. Oh, your kids enjoy it. You never, girl. I love um, Disney Plus because I'm a Marvel head. Love it. Um, anyway, so this this cryptocurrency tried to trademark Tron, Tron Network, and Tronics, right? So they applied to the USPTO, um, and of course, Disney with their bevy of lawyers, they keep track of people. You know what they're applying for. They saw somebody was trying to trademark Tron, and they were like. No, 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 we have the trademark to Tron because of these movies. Now, Dis like I said, Disney got long money, and you don't want smoke with Disney. So it is perfectly, you know, logical that this small cryptocurrency company, you know, was like, I don't want any smoke with Disney. Let me fall back and not try and trademark these terms. Here's the problem. Instead of withdrawing their application, meaning telling the USPTO, hey, we've decided not to go forward with this application, they just abandoned it. And it looks kind of bad on your part as a company because it's rude. It's like going to ask somebody for something or, you know, uh, go asking to borrow something and you tell them, I'm going to be, um, you know, let me know what you think about it. And the person comes, you know, comes back waiting for you to follow up and you never do. So they basically were just like, oh, there's going to be trouble. Well, we're not, we're not even going to talk about it. And they just like walked away. So <clears throat> their application, as opposed to being withdrawn, is now considered abandoned. Now, whether it's abandoned with prejudice, who knows? But 
It's not a good look for you because you basically wasted the USPTO's time. You could have told them you don't want it. So if in the future you are applying for a trademark and you are opposed by a company, um, don't just let the application go. Withdraw your application. Do not just abandon it, okay? Um, so that was the lesson that I really wanted to pull from um, that story. <clears throat> okay, so we've only got one, two, three more stories, okay? And when it, we're going to get through them pretty quickly uh, so your girl can get some dinner. Um, all right. Uh, do I have anybody here who wears Adidas? If you have heard of Adidas, if you have ever worn Adidas, give me an A. <clears throat> if you know what Adidas is. And if you have heard of Aviator Nation, give me an N. If you have heard of Adidas, give me an A. If you have heard of Aviator Nation, give me an N. If you have not heard of Aviator Nation, thank you for the A capital credit, Mish. If you have not heard of Aviator Nation, that's fine. I just heard about it today, too. But if you've heard of Tom's, Aviator Nation is kind of related because the owner of Aviator Nation is the sister of the creator of the Tom's brand. Now, why am I talking about Aviator Nation and Adidas? So Aviator Nation and Adidas have had a back and forth for a few years now. Aviator Nation has been sued or, or been threatened with suits multiple times by Adidas for trademark infringement for using stripes in their designs. Now, we know that Adidas is very sue happy. They will sue any and everybody over some stripes, right? Um, and Aviator Nation is no different. In fact, Adidas and Aviator Nation act, have a couple of settlements agreements agreeing that Aviator Nation would not produce three striped element type clothing, right? Um, but Adidas is saying that Aviator Nation keeps infringing. Now, I posted in my stories today pi several pictures of several pieces of Aviator Nation clothing. And I asked if you guys thought that it looked like Adidas and it was a 100% no. Here's why I think you guys are right and Adidas is wrong. The stripes on the Aviator Nation clothing, it's anywhere between four and five stripes and they're rainbow colors. We all know that for the most part, Disney, um, look up Disney, Adidas's three stripes is usually one color. It's monochromatic or whatever, right? But these are, are like, uh, you know, four to five different stripes of prime, primary, you know, basic colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, whatever. So <clears throat> if you had a chance to look at my stories, um, what do you, uh, what do you think about it? Do you think that Adidas is doing too much in this case? Because we have cases where Adidas has done too much and we have cases where Adidas was found right that like the court was like yeah they are they are infringing on your trademark so what do we think in this case i personally think that adidas is doing too much because the pieces of clothing that they claim that aviator nation um is using to infringe on their mark the the lines are there it's not three lines it's they're all more than three lines and they're multicolor lines it reminds me of when adidas was suing j crew for this pattern they were trying to trademark of um it was like blue and white and maroon and these stripes and they were saying oh that infringes on our three stripe mark and the court was like uh girl you're tripping so we're gonna wait and see what happens between adidas and aviator nation but i personally don't think um, that it's going to be in Adidas's favor. I just don't see the um, similarities, okay? All right. Uh, yes. Okay. We are flying through these guys. Um, if you have just tuned in, you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my usually four times a week live broadcast, but we are in holiday time, so this is my last official broadcast of 2019. It's Christmas time, y'all can't wait. 
Um, if you are interested in any of the things I do, go to Linktree forward slash MTL Consulting Firm, Linktree forward slash MTL Consulting Firm, Linktree forward slash MTL Consulting Firm. You're going to find my YouTube channel where you can watch all the episodes of this show. You're going to find my podcast where you can find the audio of this show and interviews I have with interesting entrepreneurs. You're going to find my business launch cheat sheet that will help you launch your dream business in seven days or less. And you will also find... Um, my booking link where you can book a free 15 minute discovery call. I'm not taking one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions right now, but I am taking discovery calls for 2020. So go check out Linktree forward slash MPL consulting firm. All right. Um, also, if you're interested in any of my digital products, go to gumroad.com forward slash MPL consulting firm. I have tons of eBooks, video trainings, cool stuff that will help you streamline and get your business foundation together. All right. Cool. Now, hi, Route to Victory. How are you? Um, thank you for joining. Our next case we are talking about. This is a cautionary tale, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Um, there is a company in North Carolina named, <clears throat> or a bakery, I should say. The bakery name in North Carolina named Just Simply Delicious. Uh, they've been in business for 10 years they have a website, they have an IG page, they have a Facebook page, they have a Twitter page, all just simply delicious, right? Been rocking for 10 years, doing a good job. Have, they, they're located specifically in Waynesville, North Carolina, started by this woman who just, you know, wanted to be a baker. 2018, this Minnesota company trademarks the term simply delicious for their baked goods that are sold in convenience stores. Now, they trademarked the term in 2018, but they say that they've been using the term since the 90s. They've got the legal trademark. And once they got the legal trademark, they sent a cease and desist letter to this, bake to this bakery, Just Simply Delicious. They said, hey, we've got the trademark to Simply Delicious, so you can no longer use just simply delicious. This reminds me of that case where that Utah company trademarked backcountry and was going after any company that had backcountry in the name. Here's the problem. Um, it's only one person that they're targeting. And this woman, she does not have the, you know, the money to really fight this case. So this business owner has to undo 10 years of branding. They, she has to change her business name, her social media handles, all of this. And it's going to be very expensive. When I read the article, she said, I should have trademarked this term. And because she didn't, now she has to change her entire business name. And she said it's going to cost her a lot of money because over the 10 years, she's built up a lot of you know clout. She comes up in Google searches. And now because she has to change the name, She's going to drop in the rankings when people are looking for bakeries in North Carolina. Um, so the reason why I wanted to pick this case is because I wanted to show you the importance of protecting your brand. She literally thought she was like, yeah, she thought she was like, you know, I'm just a little bakery in North Carolina. Nobody's really going to care. We're in a very, because of the internet, the world has become a lot smaller. There is no such thing as being too small anymore. It is in your interest to protect your stuff. If you don't, you might end up in a situation like this where this woman has been building her business for 10 years and now has to change everything because she failed to trademark her business name. So this is just a cautionary tale to y'all as to why I stress that you protect your brands. That does suck capital credit means like I feel for this woman, but you know, that's the way that the law works. This company took the time to trademark the term and now they have the power to stop you from using it. <coughs> and what made me even sadder was that this woman, she said she had saved up all this money because she wanted to expand her business and renovate some things. And now she has to use it to rebrand her entire business. Like, it's, it's a really sad situation. So, when in doubt, trademark, guys. <clears throat> okay? And she even said that when she was choosing her business name, she, you know, searched and tried to find a name that nobody had. And she did find it until 10 years later when somebody else thought of it and trademarked it. Okay? 
so good luck to uh that lady uh i i hope that she's able to retain you know the bulk of her clientele um and we are on to our last case ladies and gentlemen um does anybody here hi be captivating by angel does anybody here drink kombucha I have never had kombucha. I, I know it's something fermented. Supposedly, it's supposed to be a healthy drink. I'm kind of scared of it. <laughs> but does anybody here drink kombucha? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, kombucha. Okay. So um, this is why I'm asking about kombucha. Uh, uh, kombucha, it's like a fermented health drink. Um, so here's the problem. There is a company called Good Omen Bottling. And they've got a trademark to the term, happy holidays, honey. They've got a trademark to the term wild tonic that they've had since 2014. And the term is used in relation to vitamin fortified beverages and nutritional supplements. Um, this company also good omen bottling. They also say that they registered the term, uh, the trademark for use with kombucha along with wild tonic in 2016. Um, and they have several drinks under the wild tonic name. Um, and their phrase, their, their, their company motto is be wild, B E E wild drink wild and all of these are registered trademarks so they did their job they registered wild tonic they registered for use with kombucha they registered be wild drink wild here's the problem there is a company in baltimore called mob town fermentation they make something called wild kombucha they filed an application to trademark the term wild kombucha in 2015 the trademark was registered in 2016 and their motto is drink local, drink wild. So Good Omen Bottling, they basically are taking issue with the fact that this Baltimore company is using the term wild in its, um, in its uh, drink name and its, you know, and, and its phrasing. Uh, because remember, they have, they have a registered trademark to wild tonic, they have a registered trademark for be wild, drink wild. That's one side. Then you have this other side where they have the trademark to wild kombucha. So do you think that wild kombucha has the capacity to be confused with wild tonic? And remember, wild tonic is not the name of one drink. Wild tonic is an umbrella name for several drinks that this company has. So... <clears throat> is this wild kombucha drink going to be confused with any of these wild tonic drinks? What do you guys think about that? What do you think? Because I, um, I think that it's a little... I think that the, the, the wild tonic company is being a little bit too aggressive here. I don't think that somebody is, depending on, first of all, I didn't see what the tags look like. I don't know what the labels look like. Be Captivating by Angel doesn't think that there would be confusion. I don't think so either. I feel like if wild, it's like, uh, for me, I'm thinking of, of Coca-Cola and then under Coca-Cola, you have like, you know, cherry Coke, vanilla Coke, blah, 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 blah. Um, Be Captivating by Angel said they are stretching. Whereas wild kombucha is just like, the name of one single drink. So we will have to wait and see what happens between these two companies because they are in a, in a similar, in a similar, um, industry. They, they, they provide, you know, supposedly healthy, whatever vitamin supplement drinks. Again, I'm not exactly sure what kombucha is or does, but supposedly it's healthy. Um, uh, but We'll just have to wait and see what happens between these two country, these two companies. But I do think that this Good Omen company, with their wild tonic uh, registered trademark, is stretching it a little bit. I don't see anybody saying, "Oh, wild kombucha and wild tonic are the same thing," because I don't. When I think kombucha, I don't think tonic. Now, you may have trademarked the term for use with kombucha, but that doesn't mean that you have a kombucha drink, right? So, what do you guys think about that? What do 
y'all think about that? <laughs> I'm being silly. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So those were the cases that I had for you guys today. I wanted to talk to you one last time before I go on my holiday. I'm about to go home, get spoiled by my mama and my daddy. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, I will probably be on at least once while I'm away. Um, Be Captivating by Angel said, I think they need to calm down. I think they do too. I think they've been drinking too much of that wild tonic and it's got them all worked up. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so th those were the stories that I had for you today. I will probably be on by the end of the week or at some point um, during my vacation because I still will be collecting stories. And if I find one that's pretty juicy, I'm going to want to talk to y'all about it. If you find any stories, please send them to me. Make sure you check out Linktree forward slash MPL Consulting Firm to see all the stuff I do. Um, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays, whatever you celebrate. I hope you are with loved ones and that you are, you know, you feel loved and affirmed and happy and safe. Um, so happy holidays to you all and I will see you next time. Bye.